<laughs> um, somebody has a microphone on somewhere. Oh, it's you? Are you talking? Uh, so how is everybody doing? Are you doing okay? Good. Uh, um, how many people are coming tonight to the little concert? Oh, awesome. Oh, that's great. That's a lot of you. Um, that's cool. That'll be fun. I'm very excited. Um, I've had a lot of requests, so it made it made the set list easy. I know what we're gonna play now. Um, so yeah. Uh, question? Uh, it's not a question. It's just a request. Okay. Um, over the past few years, um, the wonderful fans of Jim have shown their love and appreciation by raising a lot of money for charity, and we've done the same again this year. We wonder if we can give you this check. Yeah. Wow, what is this? What the heck? No way. Oh, no way. It's uh, for the National Stroke Association for $3,200. $3,200 for the National Stroke Association. Thank you, everyone. This is so amazing. Thank you so much. Wow, this is so incredible. You guys are... Unbelievable. That, this is great. I'm really touched by this. This is really, really, really special. Thank you. It's so important and such an important thing to, to, to know and to know about the Stroke Association. Please go check out that website if you haven't already, just so you can be aware of the signs if a friend of yours is having a stroke. Unfortunately, you know, it's just more common than it should be. And, uh, Anyway, I'm really touched by that. Thank you so much. I would not be here without you guys, without question. So just thank you so much for all your love and support through, throughout the years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to miss your concert. Would you like to sing a song? Sure, me? I'll sing a song for you. Thank you. Uh, um, what's, uh, what song should I sing? Anything will be fine. Okay. I'm trying to think what I wasn't going to play tonight. Who you think I should be? 
think that I could Been walking around with my head hanging down I really don't think that I should Gonna head down town Let down miss you tonight, but I'll be happy that you got a good night's rest and ready for work tomorrow. Um, thank you, guys. Makes me excited to play more for you tonight. which is something I haven't talked that much about, I don't think. So, it, organized chaos was the phrase that sprang to my mind. I just thought maybe you could tell us a bit more behind the scenes from that. Yeah, um, so Kings of Con was the show that Richard and I did, and Kings of Conversation was our, our, our after talk show that we put on uh, weekly, every Tuesday. And um, it was so fun. We, we want to we wanna keep that going. We'd love to make it like a, a talk show that he and I host, you know, um, just bring on our friends and talk about whatever. Um, yeah, it was, it was uh, you know, originally Richard had this idea, he wanted to do uh, an after show, talk show about Supernatural, but it, it, it never happened, and so we took that idea and we kind of made it into the Kings of Con after show, we like, kind of like the conventions are in the United States, so my band is there, and you know, and then we, it would be like a le our own, like David Letterman show, you know. Um, so that was kind of the impetus of to doing it, and it was great. There, there was a separate production company that um, that produced the whole thing. There were like seven or eight live cameras going, and it was it was it was so fun because it was like doing live theater. So you know you had all these little cameras lined up, and the one that was red is the one that you'd look at. And we had it, you know, rehearsed. We'd do a run through at like five o'clock, and then at seven it was like live showtime. It was like really live. You know, it was really live TV for us. We were really doing, doing it live. Um, so that always creates this a sort of energy. Everybody's kind of like, yeah. And, uh, and funny things happen and you mess up and you just have to, you know, you no editing. Uh, but, but it was funny. Uh, you know, it, it was also a lot of pressure. I mean, I sweat my face off. I was so sweaty because it was like, you have to be done in 40 minutes or whatever. Anyway, but one funny story is that when we had uh, Bernie Capel on and we're doing it live, uh, and uh, Bernie Capel is an older actor, he's in Love Boat, and he's in our show, Kings of Con. And he was really blue, like he really, uh, he was really dirty. He really, and it was like saying things that you can't say, you shouldn't say. But he was, he's like that old school kind of like, rah, 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 rah. and it was, it was okay for him, but we were like, I was sweating, and all Rich could do was just laugh. Like he was not saving me, so I'm doing the interview, and I'm like, so... I don't even tell you what he said, but he said some things that were pretty bad, and <laughs> I'm still trying to do the interview, like, hey, that's funny, Bernie, but let's keep it clean, because we're live, and it's live TV and everything, so, you know, and, uh, but he just couldn't do it, so uh, that, was, that was a fun moment that Rich always talks about as his, one of his favorite moments ever in life. Included and stuff and all that, which was great. So, so great, so great. Because we were like, if we're going to do this, we have to include the fans because they're such a huge part of what this is. And um, yeah, people submitted their fan art, and then we'd have it on our TV. It was the set was a bar, like we were just hanging out in a bar. Um, you can see all these; they're on YouTube. You can see it for free. Kings of Conversation. Anyway, so yeah, we had the fan art, and uh, it's great. I'm glad you liked it. Is it your turn? Yeah, I guess. Um, so um, there was, I, like, God had a lot of free time in Supernatural, like, sometimes. And if there would be, like, some kind of God spin-off, um, what do you think, what do you do, like, when he has, try, when he's trying to have, like, fun, you know? I don't know, what's, like, the weirdest thing God would have done in his free time? Yeah, it's funny. So, God spin-off show, just, hey, it's me, God. <laughs> hey, you, it's me, God. Um, I love the idea. I think it's, it's going to be a great show. It's my new favorite show. Um, I think it'd be funny if it were a comedy. Why not? Come, comedy by God. And then, um, what would he do? Well, what's interesting, I think, is like when I went back to Supernatural in season 11, 
you know, Chuck is talking about how he's basically been wandering the earth and he's had boyfriends, he's had girlfriends, you know, um, he's, you know, yeah, which is awesome, which I love, this is my favorite line in that whole episode. Um, and you know, he's, he's just having a great, kind of a rollicking good time. So I think it'd be funny if it's kind of God on vacation, right? Like or doing the things that God never got the chance to do, you know, eating cotton candy and, you know what I mean, going to the circus, I don't know, whatever it is. And if he doesn't like it, he just can snap his fingers away whatever and make it different. So that might be fun, something like that. Circus, cotton candy, how do you feel about that? Maybe some ice cream. Maybe some ice cream, sure. I'd like to see him with his boyfriends and with his girlfriends. I mean then, yeah, no, and so, yeah, so, okay, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it needs to be uh, on HBO. <laughs> Sounds like. Um, Maybe Masters of Sex Crossover. <laughs> yeah, Sex Crossover, yeah. My, uh, yeah, my catalog of projects that have the word sex in them. If you look at my IMDb page, there's an unfortunate amount of shows I've done that have the Rome. word sex in them. It's so, it's so not me or who I am, but... It's hard to explain to the kids. Um, anyway, cotton candy, circus, boyfriends, God. Thank you. Thank you. I just love playing it on the guitar at home. Oh, awesome. It's amazing. Thank you so much. That's and, great. Uh, I was wondering if maybe you can, I know it's late, but fit it into the concert tonight. Sure, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah. And also, uh, what's your spirit animal? I will who? Spirit animal. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, my spirit animal, we've decided, is the, uh, the squirrel from Ice Age. <laughs> What's his name? Scrat. Scrat. <laughs> Scrat. My spirit animal. Um, yeah, and it's funny when I... Uh, is Liz in here? Yeah. And when we play live in America, uh, someone at some point Mar sent us... Marlene. This... Oh, really? Marlene gave it to you, yeah. Marlene gave it to me. It's a, it's, it's, it's a screech, my own little screech. And so we, it travels with us from city to city. And, and, I, and Liz puts it on my amp for me. And occasionally I come out and it's not there. And I was like, Liz. She was like, what, your guitar, your strap, picks? I'm like, no, I got all those things. I don't, I don't have the, the squirrel, the funny squirrel guy. Scrap, scrap, scrap. Anyway, so she has to make sure that that's on my amp. And then everything's right with the world. Yeah. So next time you see a video of us playing in America, look for the scrap on my amp. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm asking for a friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, she was, and me as well at this point, wondering. Um, so, uh, Chuck and Becky, God and Becky, how did that breakup go exactly? And how? <laughs> I'll tell you how. <laughs> Becky, she's crazy. <laughs> she makes me look sane. She, it's not, it's not right what happened. We, everything was going great. I thought we were back together after the, the, the real Ghostbusters. Everything's cool. And then all of a sudden, I, I go to a convention. And they're like, oh yeah, Becky was back on the show. I'm like, Becky was back? My baby? Well, where was I? And like, uh, she actually says that you guys like, were no longer seeing each other or something. And then she ties Sam to the bed and the heck? I just let you do that like behind my back, but like on my show. It doesn't make sense. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm God. But Sam's a great looking guy. I can't compete with that. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, he, he is. That's a fact. But I know what you're saying. I appreciate that. Thank you. I guess it depends what, what your bag is. Either the tall, handsome type or the little neurotic guy. <laughs> I'll take that little guy. Um, so anyway, yeah, I don't know. I, she would, she's off a rocker, but I would love. Like, I think that'd be great to have her back. I was talking to somebody earlier about um, if Chuck came back. Well, first of all, he's got some things to do as God, but I also think it would be interesting at some point to see what Chuck is like without that, without being the vessel, um, you know. And so maybe in another reality, him and Becky are happily married. <laughs> I don't think so, not so much. That's, a, That's a scary, <laughs> scary situation. But I, I love uh, Emily, who plays her. She's just adorable and uh, so sweet.
So anyway, I do think about Becky sometimes. Aww. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> She's cray cray. Oh no, 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 no. How's it going? Hey, how are you? What are you doing today? Um, well, uh, right now I'm just talking to these guys. How much apple juice have you drank since you've been up here? Not at all. We're actually having very adult conversations. Well, that's an adult But I'll show you this. Do you have a poster? They donated $3,200 oh to the Scope Association. Wow! That's amazing. So, so yeah. yeah, we're having a good talk. And, uh, what were you guys talking about? <laughs> We're talking about God, my God, the character I play, and um, and if he had a spinoff, what would it be? And I said it's got to be a comedy. Yeah, you're pretty funny. I think it could be a comedy with God. You were really, he was really funny last night, wasn't he? He's yeah. always funny. He's always funny. <laughs> it's it's rough. Honestly, slash God. It, was, it was a late night, <laughs> but I wasn't allowed to wear shades on stage, so there's it was that. a late late night. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway, we're talking about that. I played a song. Where what song did you play? Uh, Downtown Letdown. Fucking great one. Thanks, man. Thank God I wasn't here with that. What'd you guys think of Downtown Letdown? Is it good? <laughs> Are you guys still, you guys still in this, right? We're almost, we're, we're, we're around, <laughs> around the third base. I'm gonna sit down. Go, go, <laughs> going home. They're right, they're right with us. We're still having a good time. I think everybody's worried about Adam. Yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> including Adam. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna get through it's it. Great. It's great. You've been a great fill-in rich. You've been awesome. This is... Matt, Rich, and Rob usually do a panel. Hi, Matt. And hey, that's nice, nice to meet you. Me. Yeah, that's Matt. Except he has and, always uh, real hair. And now it's Matt, okay. Adam, and Rob. It's a, it's a whole new Fight. thing. I'm so glad to be part of your team. Yeah. It's, it's Ram. Ram. Do you reckon Ram. 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 Am I the meat in the sandwich? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> For sure. Uh, people will talk about the Ram panel. The Ram panel. The Ram panel. The Ram panel. Thanks, God. Crazy. And the suggestion did. They got real, real nuts up here. They came up with the first letters of their names, <laughs> made it into abbreviations. One stop talking about it. Oh, Who wants boy. to spin the wheel so that Rob has to drink? <laughs> I tried to be really good today because I got shit. Oh, what? What? <laughs> oh, sorry, Rob. All right, you pour that. I'll pour this for you. Is this your glass? And now he spins for you, right? Is that how it works? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm gonna let it go, so it doesn't let it drink. Come on, Rome, I need some energy. I can't do a panel then with that noise. Surprise! Surprise! Surprise. Shaky hands. Surprise. <laughs> oh, is this the... Down the hatch it goes. Well done. Well done. First well done. drink of the weekend for Robbie there. Well done, Rob. God, that was really bad. <laughs> uh, it tastes like... How am I God, who's tired here? We got a surprise. Nobody? Here. Nobody's tired? No. I'm impressed. Because I'm not. We're all right, buddy. Ooh, hey, Sam, this? this is for you. Oh, look. That's the surprise uh, music. That's the surprise music. Ready? Here we go. Bop, bop. Boop! Perfect! Oh, my God. Oh. It's beautiful. Can you put this on me? Put it on. It's ripped. That's good. Oh, tutu. Hold on a second. Fergus is, Fergus is all over it right there. That, okay. Uh-huh. There it is. Gentle now, like it's the first time. <laughs> it's just like it's something that happens at a wedding. <laughs> I just realized that was a bad idea. I got down on my knees. My head like, get out of here, Rob. There you go. You got it. Yeah. Now get it on. I'm gonna fall over. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, this is happening. Is that gonna happen? I have an idea. There you go. There you go. Genius. <laughs> Now I can't get it off. That's you gotta do the panel like that. It's happening. Holy shit. Well the good news is you're covered in glitter. Oh, this is my favorite play. This is a real strong start to a panel, ladies and gentlemen. Take notes on what 
not to do. Thanks for having us. So much on your behalf. This is a RAM panel, is what this is. <laughs> this is a RAM panel. Rambunctious. Listen, Hello, how are you? Let's take a question. A question? <laughs> Thank God for rescuing us. So, guys. Then we invaded the stage. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for all of you for being here for this weekend and for all the photos that you made, really, thank you. So, uh, Robert, I want to ask you uh, about Supernatural. What role do you prefer to, uh, to play, uh, Chuck or God? Well, in the business we call this being upstaged. Yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying so hard not to spank you right now. <laughs> I, uh, I, I love... I love playing the both. Uh, Chuck is just so much. Chuck is funny to me. You know, it really kind of makes me laugh. And uh, but I think that being able to play the God part was uh, ultimately more had more dimensions, and I loved that. Um, I, I liked being the, the the father figure was a really fun thing to play. So I don't know if I could pick a favorite, but certainly when you throw the God part in there, it really is just it really. Uh, it was a whole new thing, and I just thoroughly enjoyed that. But if you yeah. could pick a favorite son, who would it be? <laughs> Michael. I love you too, Dad. <laughs> so awesome. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Um, it's going great. <laughs> awesome. Um, I also have a question for Rob. Um, it's kind of specific, but um, I really love the uh, soundtrack that Eddie Vedder um, made for Into the Wild. Yeah, and great. Um, I always wonder when I listen to uh, the songs if you ever thought about doing a cover because I think it would be quite brilliant, actually. A cover of one of those songs? Yeah, yeah I'd love to co cover uh, the Sun. Uh, what's it called? It's something Sun? It's on that album. Something Sun, Behind the Sun, Something with the Sun. Um, hot sun? <laughs> yeah. Hard Sun, which he didn't write actually, but I think I'd love to cover that. Yeah, because yeah. I think it would be great with you. Yes, yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah, I'd love to. I mean, I just, you know, I love that guy. I mean, he's really cool. I want him to be my friend. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I do that, the Hard Sun song. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Didn't you meet, you met, didn't you, I, I might have this mistaken for another uh, musician, but didn't you see Vetter at some point? Yeah, I met him, I met him twice, and both times it was weird and awkward, because I'm weird and awkward, but I was, uh, the first time I was at Lollapalooza, old school Lollapalooza, like 1992, or 93 in Chicago, and he was, and I, we heard that, it, they were so new, like, not even a lot of people knew them, they played at like two in the afternoon. And then uh, we heard that he would wander around and look at the, the things that we're about. And, you know, they have, uh, you know, tents and stuff. And sure, my friend and I are walking, and we're like, oh, my God, that's him. We're like, Eddie, Eddie, we're, what's, we're just huge fans. We're huge fans. He was like, cool, cool, thanks, yeah. Thanks, and we shook our hands, and we're like, um, can, can, we, can we take a picture? And it was before, before um, cell phones. It was a long time ago. And so, uh, but it was sort of like, can we take a picture? God is old. Yeah. So I was like, uh, can we take a picture? And he was like, uh, no, man, but hey, I'll remember your faces. I'll remember your faces. Like, cool, man, cool, cool. So I, uh, this is, I'm a total fanboy of Pearl Jam, so I've been to Pearl Jam shows where I think we've made eye contact, and I think that he remembers me. He doesn't, he doesn't. So then I saw him real quick, because I was supposed to go, but then I saw him, my friend knew, knew uh, Ben Harper, who was opening up for him, so I got backstage at his uh, solo show where he was playing the songs on that soundtrack, and, um, and I got, we got backstage, long story short, the whole night ended with me in his dressing room, me, Eddie, my friend, Ben Harper, and like another lady that I don't know who it was. And, <laughs> and I was, I love how you showed it, don't say that quietly into the microphone, like, and just some other girl, and nobody knew. And I, I was so nervous, and I was asking really weird questions because I just wanted to be engaging him. So I was like, yeah, so, um, that, that last song you played, that, that was a good song. And I knew it was like, Ark, it's a song I know. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's a Pearl Jam song called Ark. I was like, oh, really? And I totally, I was like, yeah, you know, I know that. But I, it was, I was like, God, you're failing, you're failing, you're not connecting. So then I saw him light a cigarette. And um, he had this pack of cigarettes right here. And I was like, okay, maybe, God, I'm such a nerd. Maybe I'll smoke and then we'll talk about it. <laughs> so the lady I don't know, the lady I don't know is sitting between us. And so I just go, um, hey, could you pass me one of those cigarettes? And she's like, 
why don't you get them yourself? And I was like, uh, or no, she, why don't you ask him for them? And I was like, uh, I'm shy. And he, talking to Ben Harper, so you're me, and he just goes like this. Yeah, so, so was, he heard me. He heard me, and he passed it to me. And he that, probably recognized your voice. Yeah, totally, from this. So anyway, that, and we never talked, but he heard me. Awesome. Yeah. I feel like if Eddie Vedder got to sit through a loud and swaying show, he yeah. would walk up to you at the end and go, you're fucking rock guy. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Little does he know, little does Eddie better know, he has respect of one of the great musicians of my lifetime as far as I'm concerned. So he, should, he should be appreciative and always yeah. share his cigarettes. Yeah. Thank Robert you so Benedict. much, everybody. Robert Benedict, everybody. Make some noise for Robert. Favorite people in the world, honestly, aside from you now. Yes, that. Oh, God, God. You're so beautiful. Thank you. I I like you too. What do you call yourself when you're wearing bunny ears? Uh, I, a bunny mat. Oh, bunny mat. Bunny mat. Bunny mat. Bunny mat. It's, it's real original. Yeah, no, it's good though. It's, it's got a ring to it. I spent a lot of time thinking about it, mm -hmm. and uh, there it is. So bunny mat. Bunny. Bunny mat. Uh, Hello, how are you? Hi. <laughs> How's it going? You having a good time? Absolutely. <laughs> You're still rocking, anyway. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you too. And I'm acting as a translator, actually. And funny thing is, English is not so not my first language. So me neither. Bear with me. Uh, <laughs> um, for a friend who wanted to ask Matt a question uh, about uh, the recent episode you did of Criminal uh, uh, Minds. Sorry, but <laughs> nervous. Yeah, sure. Be Don't nervous. be nervous. Oh, okay. And uh, first things first, uh, you look gorgeous with a beard. Oh, thank you. It was a fake beard. I couldn't grow a real beard like that. If I tried with all my manhood, it would never be that amazing. It's a sad truth. Anyways, your question. And um, uh, what was it like to act beside Gary Sinise? Uh, it was awesome because, uh, does everybody know the movie Forrest Gump? Yeah. Right? I grew up on that movie. That was one of the first CD soundtracks that I bought with my own money as a little boy. as a two-disc, had all the American classics on it. And uh, Lieutenant Dan, right? We know Lieutenant Dan. I'm walking here, you know, in his wheelchair. This was an iconic character to me. I could not ever understand how a man could pull off such a, such a great role. And so when I got to play his son, it was, it was awesome. You know, I was standing across from a person that I, I look at uh, like a legend. Like, you know, uh, there's no higher, higher uh, thing I could expect from my acting career than to act with people that you look up to, right? You know? So it was spectacular. One day I'm going to share the screen with this guy, one way or another. Hopefully. One way or another. I'm we, writing something for us. When we get, we, we get, we get uh, uh, what's the, the character's name? You're mad. Mick. Mick. He watches the show. Yeah, watch, I've seen every episode. Uh, we're gonna have uh, you know a little spinoff. It'll be Mick Davies and Bunny and, and Bunny Matt and, and Bunny Matt. Matt. We're gonna be all together. Real in interesting heaven. situation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Hello. Hi. How are you? My question is for Matt. Oh wow! Listen, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just tell you this right now. I usually do panels with Robin Rich. Yeah. And nobody asks me shit. So <laughs> I'm gonna really bask in this moment. Okay. Well, you know what? I can't really talk right now, so it's probably a good thing. <laughs> your question, dear. Uh, yes, I wanted to talk about uh, Kings of Calm and yeah. uh, your character. Could you sort of play a version of yourself? Not a very nice. Wait a minute. Wait not a minute. Wait, nice. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, not quite. No. Uh, Everything, I guess, is essentially a version of ourselves, right? We're as some kind of character coming out of us that we're coming from the inside. But I just wanted to just say for the record, I'm nothing like that asshole, okay? <laughs> My Robin Rich wrote this fantastic comedy based on conventions called Kings of Con, and I play a version of myself, not Matt Cohen, but Matt Cochran, and I'm over-the-top, uh, self-serving asshole. Dude. Yes, yes. Uh, so wait, what's your question? Well, it was just your thoughts about that, and how did um, Richard and... Um, you should see him in the green room. <laughs> yeah. How did they approach you? Like, was it your idea? Was it their idea? I begged to be part of their project, and uh, then they said, you have to run through the streets of Beverly Hills naked on videotape. <laughs> which I did, which is on YouTube, totally. Mm -hmm. We raised a hundred thousand dollars because I ran through the streets of Beverly Hills naked. And um, I would like to say it's because of my package and my ass that Kings of Con was actually made. So 
You're welcome, Robin Rich. Uh, no, that's all BS aside. If Richard Spade Jr. says, I'm going to direct a series, and Rob Benedict says, I'm going to write a series, you get down on your hands and knees and you do whatever you have to to be part of that series. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I was just lucky to be in, in with people that I think are comic geniuses and to take direction from a man that is a mentor to me in this business as a is a friend, a father, a husband, everything, and to read the words that one of the most talented musicians, one of the best written musicians, write for you. It's just blessed experience. I'm just, I'm super lucky to be that asshole, you know? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, over here. How's it going? Are you having a good time? Yeah, really good. Um, sorry, it's for Max again. Holy shit. I gotta walk up to this. This is such a big deal. I'm, I'm out of here. You're just, you stay right there. I'm gonna just, this is the third question. It might be the last question that I ever get asked at a con. I really wanna milk this moment. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Your question. Um, what's the time production like between General Hospital and Supernatural? Is it <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a question. What's the, what's the production like Supernatural versus General Hospital? Jensen could uh, give you guys some good insight on soap opera land too. Um, it's crazy. So on Supernatural, a heavy day is maybe 10 pages, At right? the most, yeah. Like, that's a big day. That's like, we're shooting over time with 10 pages of action and chaos and beautiful sci-fi magic. We do about, we average about 110 to 130 pages a day. That's on absolutely Supernatural. crazy, by the way. Yeah. To explain to her what, what happens. So like in Supernatural, you have maybe, you, you talk to the actors beforehand, you rehearse the scene, yeah. you do like, you know, each setup has maybe two or three takes at minimum. General Hospital. How long does it take to shoot a three-page scene on Supernatural? Uh, four hours, maybe. Four hours. All right. So I, I'll come into General Hospital. I've had my biggest day so far was 72 pages of dialogue. That's we roll cameras at 8:30, and our lunch break is at 12:45. I would have been done with those 72 pages by about 10:45 in the morning. It's one rehearsal. One take, five cameras running. If you screw it up, too bad. It's going on the air as long as the camera doesn't fall over. That's the only thing. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah. There. Like theater, you only get one bite of the cherry. Yeah. And uh, on, on film, you think you have loads. But like, you know, it, it's a really good way of preparing yourself for, you know, working on a show like Supernatural to do something like what Matt's doing now. It's like, it's, it's the hardest thing possible as an actor to do that. Like one take, one chance, you don't know what the other actor's gonna do, it's really, really tough. Yeah, you know, you get so spoiled doing the other projects like Supernatural, where you spend some time getting into a moment, you've got your guy across from you or your girl, and you're, you're having a, you're, you're experiencing, you're experiencing- a proper some, connection. Yeah, right? a proper connection, and here it's, you better show up and just know it. It's almost like preparing for an audition. You know, you walk up, and you're the casting director, you're gonna read the lines, with nothing, just read them to me so I can read off you and I have to give some sort of performance and pretend that I have a connection. Maybe I'll find a connection, more than likely I won't. I mean, this is the casting process. It's not you, honestly, it is what you did a great no, job. I am fully really connected job. to you, my love, I promise. We're connected, the supernatural family, we're all connected. But that's besides the point. You gotta show up and just hope for the best, right? And then if it does feel really bad, you're just like, oh, a camera fell over, I guess we gotta try it one more time. <laughs> No, but I have, I have found out a way, and ABC and Disney would probably hate me for saying this, but I found a way to get a second take, and that's I put the word fuck into my dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> like, half, halfway through the scene, if I'm not feeling it, I'm like, you know, I'd really like to go to the I'm coffee fuck. shop, but I can't fuck find my car, and then, you know, they give me another shot at it, which is great, because it's the only hope I have, an actor like me. He needs, I'm a guy that needs at least two takes, I'm not a one take, one take guy. Anyways, thank, thank you. Thank you for your questions. Hi, yeah. Hi. How's it going? I'm oh, good. <laughs> are you? Are you stop crying? Yeah. Great. Still not crying. I mean, still stop. I still know. stop crying. Yeah. Still stop crying. Don't worry. We yeah. both feel. Exactly I cried last night. <laughs> um, so my question is, um, I don't know if Tony wants to stand up, but Adam, you're like one of Tony's um, favorite actors. Where's Tony? Tony? Where's Tony? And um, I mean, her birthday is a little bit. I mean, it was in March, but still, I don't know. What, what date in March? Tony, come here. Tony, come, come, come up here. You, you just come here. 
Go ahead, you can continue with your speech. I'm Thank you. <laughs> and I, my question was if you could maybe, like, I don't know, sing Give happy birthday. Oh, sing happy birthday? Yeah. Get, get, get up here on the stage. Okay. Yeah. Mind you, you're gonna get. Yeah. We're two of the it. worst singers in the world, by the way, on stage right now. And that uh, you're not one of them. Crowd participation is very important. Okay. You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Yeah. This right here is exactly why I think we still oh come God. to these damn things, man. Tony, you're amazing. Happy birthday. I'll give you a hug, too. Even give it up for Tony. 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 That's not even... Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Hiya. How's it going? Fine, thanks. Cool. So, uh, Adam, yesterday you told us that uh, you went alone to see Beauty and the Beast. Still rub it in, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> My question is, um, if you could be any character of Beauty and the Beast, which one would you be? And the same is for you, Matt. Yeah, I don't know. Like I've got, a, I've got an affiliation for the clock for some reason. Um, I'm a big fan of the toaster. Oh, yeah. I didn't see the new movie. You should, you should talk about the new movie. The right? new movie, yeah, yeah. But the, the piano that shoots the piano keys. Mm. Yeah, I think that's him. Yeah. In the original, I'm trying to think about the original. Um, I can't really remember because, if I'm honest, it's not one of my favorite Disney cartoons. Um, but um, Jesus. How was the, the remake? I heard it was pretty well, damn we, good. we talked about it yesterday, and I'm going to bore these people, but, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the animation yeah. of the, the original, and, like, you know, uh, the, the, the cartoons really rocked my world, and yeah. so the, the new one is kind of very, it's live action, obviously, and the animation is incredible. It's like, it's the way they animate the piano and the, and the clock and everything. Beasts. Animation or is it? Yeah, kind of. That's the only thing that kind of that, like splits it. But um, uh, yeah, it's it just it, it ruins that thing for me, that animation thing. Like so, I think Beauty and the Beast should always be this cartoon yeah. that you that you look at, you know. And uh, and it's not that. And you know, as we said yesterday, Aladdin is one of my favorites, and and they're making that now. So I'm just kind of live action. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. I don't know. Like we, we I, wonder, I might be able to cast as the rug, the carpet. You'd be a great rug. I'm good at like doing this. <laughs> Do you reckon you can? If I'm not if I'm Aladdin, it's okay. Can we put water. that there? It's only water. So if I'm Aladdin, yeah. You, like this. <laughs> I think we're gonna get a call back. Sure, <laughs> if that's the audition. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Rome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Excellent. Great. So I, I asked David this question uh, this morning. Um, if you could be a fly in the wall on, uh, in any situation, uh, either past or present, I guess it's always the past, <laughs> uh, in what situation would you want to be a fly? The wall, on the wall right now actually would be kind of incredible, <laughs> looking at myself. No, no. Right. Uh, um, really, in any, any given way. Okay. Jesus, man. That's a really good one. I mean, there's like a million scenarios. None popping into my mind right now. Absolute <laughs> zero. Um, I don't know. I think it would be interesting, one scenario, to be a fly on the wall when Donald Trump rolls out of bed in the morning and decides what he's going to do with his hair. Like when he looks in the mirror and he goes, ah, this is what I'm doing today. This looks, this is fresh and tight. When, they, when they, people were peeing on him in that, in that hotel room? Yeah, fly no, on the wall. No, that's not that one. That would be disgusting. Um, I'd love to, I always wanted to see Bob Marley in concert. Oh, uh, all good that life, one. You know? So, uh, yeah, okay. to be a fly on the wall in a Bob Marley concert would definitely be one, you know? That's a really great question. I'm going to think of question. much better answers. So, we'll get back to you on that one. Thank you. Thank where, you. Where, 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 where would you like to be a fly on the wall? What was your, what's your dream fly on the wall scenario, other than Jared and Jensen's trailer? Oh, that wouldn't even be my answer. 
answer. Um, I don't know about dream, but I would love to be a fly on the wall in the green room in co during conventions. I think that'd be hilarious. Just watch Kings of Come. Yeah. yeah. It's not far off. <laughs> it's not far off. That's why. That's great. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Great question. <laughs> Hiya. Yes. How he made you pay the bill for the drinks? Yeah, he did. I was just wondering if you ever got back, uh, did you ever get back at him, or if you did? I can tell you this much: he's never paid me back. I can tell you that. This no, is. Did you took took revenge on him? Uh, because of no, that? it's hard to take. Did you see that giant piece of spit fly over? No, I didn't. Uh, it's hard to take revenge on a man like Richard Spade because he's always keen to what. I'm doing, and if I'm screwing around with him, he knows it. So, no, I'm yet to take revenge. I am still planning revenge. Over a quick fill-in on the story, one of the first cons I ever did, we had a meet and greet like we had here in a room, and I was like, ah, Rich, it's me and you, we just don't know each other, let's take the whole meet and greet to the bar. Took the whole meet and greet to the bar, he sat everybody down around the bar, here, everybody order a drink off the menu. I'm like, fantastic, I'm like, the bill comes at the end, and Rich is like, oh, oh, I'll take it, I got it. Go to check out, fast forward the next day, I have a $375 bar tab on my room bill. And this is like back in the day when like... That was like me and Brianna the other night, yeah. <laughs> totally. But it, it was like at a point where $375 to me was like, it's still a lot of money, but at, then it was like, that was like my cab ride home. Like I needed a money. Long cab ride. A long cab ride when you're drunk and lost, it's in circles constantly. So. Thank you for your question. I will get his ass back, I promise. The Thank you. The tricksters, the tricksters run's only gonna last so long. Hello. How's it going? Hi. Are you well? You having a good time? Good. Uh, it's pretty random. It's for both of you. Okay. Um, since everybody's been talking about music, I was wondering what's the latest record you bought. Well, you know, this is the thing about music these days. I don't know how musicians make money, and it's really frustrating because I have Apple Music, and I, people nowadays seem to only have Apple or Spotify, and so I pay for the Apple Music thing. Um, I just yesterday, what, oh my God, what's Jensen's Mark Roussard? Do you know Mark? Yeah. Oh Mark my Roussard. God, this guy is amazing. Like Jensen, obviously, is a big country music fan. Has anyone here Jensen sing? <laughs> Holy moly. So, we talking about green room stories. We just sang um, um, the, 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 the band, Take a Load Off Fanny. In, well, I didn't. I just hummed along. Jensen was singing it with, with Jason Mance, and uh, it was amazing. Just in the green room, just strumming away. And, uh, like, so last night, um, or, well, actually, ages ago in, in the makeup trailer, Jensen put me on to this guy. And he's so, so good. So if anyone has access to either of these things, I think his name is Mark Roussard. Yeah. Um, he's like 24, 25. He's amazing. Um, so like, I like him. I, 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 Alt J, or another friend of mine, uh, First Aid Kit. Can't believe I just forgot that name. First Aid Kit, Flea Foxes. I like, I like there's... The great thing about that is that like, if someone mentions a band to you, you don't have to go to HMV or you don't have to go anywhere or Virgin Records or whatever. You just go and you download or you, you search on your phone. And uh, the, yeah, like there's, there's so much good. So access to a viewer or to a, not viewer, an audio or a listener, a listener <laughs> is so much, it's, it's so much better nowadays. But uh, I don't know how the artists make money. So it's, uh, our job was hard, being a musician, 10 times harder. Yeah. Yeah, How about you? I agree. I'm gonna honestly, no all BS aside, my literal most recent album, which is no surprise to you people. I could be the perfect dog. And like, I'm gonna check out the guy with a two-year-old. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show you how honest it is. Look, there's my recently added. It's Drake, More Life which is a horrendous album by Drake, who is used to be a friend of mine, and all of his other albums I'm huge fans of, I think this one sucks. And the number one, Moana, is my most recently purchased awesome. album. And I may not buy another album for months, so prepare to sicken yourself with me singing Moana. Why don't you sing us a song? Um, what's the first line again? I forgot, I don't know what Wait, wait, I'm gonna come up with it. Uh, no, I don't remember it, what is it? There's a... 
There's a line in the sky and it something reminds me yeah. how far I'll go. I don't think that's right, but I want it to be so bad. <laughs> Where the sky meets the sea and calls me. Awesome, my cone. I that's what love I you. got, buddy. That's all, all I got. Right, love you. I'm trying well. to learn the Rock Your Welcome song, but give me give me some time on that one. He's just got the charisma that I'm still working that's on. Awesome, dude. Come on, next. Thank question. you so much. Yes. It's I almost am. over. It's wow. terrible. I know. I can't believe it. I know. Shh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bring it my down. Question Adam. is for Matt. Um, well, this is the best day of my life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm glad I'm here to share it with you. Um, so obviously Jeffrey Dean Morgan did a great job as John, and but did you? <laughs> but you were great too, of course. <laughs> How John girl, you know, one of the few. Um, how did you go about following that? I uh, I prayed very much, and then I realized that I'm preceding him in my first my first appearance yeah. as, as John. So I thought, hey, he better act like me. You know, I'm I'm laying the groundwork. Yeah, hey, you set the road. I, listen, I purchased Baby. It could have been Volkswagen bus, and it could have been a very different show. Good job, by the way. It was a really good purchase. We were at the car lot. And I was I was all for the Volkswagen bus. I mean, as as Matt Cohen would be, I would take the Volkswagen bus. I love the impact. Thank God for Dean. But Dean came in, you know, Dean Dean came in. <laughs> you know something about cars? Great impression. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, buy this one. <laughs> and now you have the 69 Impala, which is just 67. a piece of super 67. 67! Oh my goodness! It's because of the jet lag. Boom. It's because of the jet lag when you go there. I and just you go love back. the SBN family. They will call you out, no problem. <laughs> me. How could I not do this here? The guy told me it was a 69. I knew it was a 67. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, my question is for Adam. How you doing? Sorry, Matt. Um, don't apologize to me, you're about 18 questions. It's okay. I asked you about it in the autograph session, but I wondered if you could talk a bit about being Erica and your best experience on that show. Oh, show. wow. Thank I you. I loved, and my friend loved it. It's her birthday today. Oh, my God. Happy birthday. Who's the birthday girl? Throw your hands up in the air. No, higher. Happy birthday. Well, virtual hug. Happy birthday. Um, okay, so most of you, I don't know, anyone that's seen Being Erica, it was a show I did. And uh, the really interesting thing about that show was that, uh, so basically we were a band of misfits kind of thing that um, this doctor comes to us, uh, he's a psychiatrist, and gives us the ability to go back into our past physically and relive moments in our life that we regret. And so when you first meet him, he... He gives you a pen and a paper and he goes, write down your biggest regrets of your life. And then throughout the series, we, uh, we go back into our, into our past and, and, and these things are supposed to teach us about our present situations. And it's a really interesting kind of concept by a really lovely girl called Janice Senior who, who came up with the concept. And, uh, you know, I got to do so many different things on that show. Um, and one of the things I had to do was this group therapy session. And me and my mom in the show, my dad was an alcoholic in the show, and um, my mom, like, I, I, I had a really great, in real life, Adam, and my character's name was Adam also, which is weird, but uh, in, in real life, I had, a, I had a really wonderful parents, I have really wonderful parents, but, uh, you know, to, to play somebody that has had, you know, you know, a hard experience and has struggled with stuff, and an alcoholic father, and a, a mother who saw solace in him from an early age so my mom used to kind of get into my bed at night weirdly um and uh just seek solace from a 13 year old boy which is which is a really interesting thing to to kind of entertain as an actor um and there's this one scene towards the end of of, episode, of season three um where and I didn't know this, but in group therapy, you, you kind of get your angst out. But they, they, they give you a bat or a, or a tennis racket or something, and you beat something. Um, and it, oh, it just broke me. Um, it, really, really, it really got to me. Um, 
even thinking about it now, it's like it's it, it, it was a it was a really emotional scene. And I remember the director, Chris Grismer, he came up to me and he goes, look, I'm, I'm gonna do your close-up first. So, you know, in doing a scene, normally they do a wide, so they'll shoot everybody um, with a camera far away. Um, but in emotional scenes, it's kind of helpful for the actor who is carrying the emotion to shoot their close-up first. Because <laughs> a lot of the time you don't have tears uh, after the 15th take. Um, but that one scene, Chris came up to me and goes, hey, look, um, we're gonna just shoot your close-up first. And I did this thing when I was beating the, this thing with a tennis racket over and over again, and you know, uh, telling my mom to uh, you know, treat me like a son. I'm not your friend, I'm not your husband, I'm your son, I think was the line. Um, and uh, it took me uh, a, a good hour to get over before we could shoot the wide, because uh, I was just broken after that. And, um, it really rang home to me, like, and you know the messages I got after that, like, I, like being Eric, I didn't have the wonderful experience that I have here with you guys. Um, it was a very popular show and did very well, but um, it uh, didn't have a kind of convention type uh, feel to it. And um, but the messages I've gotten, even now, um, since then, with uh, people that have dealt with that kind of thing and people that have uh, been touched by that show and by that particular scene and, and performance, it. It meant so much to me, um, and you know, as I say, you do you do different things for different reasons, and as an actor, you get to touch people's hearts um, uh, if you're lucky. And uh, yeah, I was I'm so privileged to have done that and to have researched it, and um, yeah, uh, that's a super question. Thank you so much. It was a, it was a great scene, and I cried like a baby. Me too. I want to see that show so bad after hearing you talk about it. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's a good. It's a really, really good show. It's called Being Erica. So check it out. I, I think it's, it's on such Netflix. An interesting concept for. Yeah. So like, 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 so there's, a, there's this one funny scene, right? So um, I'm having sex with a girl, um, nice. and uh, I can't get it up in the scene, and uh, and so uh, it was played it, it wonderfully by this comedic Canadian actor. She was a she was a comedian, and uh, she just made me laugh the whole time. But at, at the end of it, you know, you walk out of, the, I, 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 like, I get up out of bed and I go, oh, don't worry about it. I'm like playing this like, kind of, like closed off Irish guy who's like, no emotion. And uh, I said, it's fine. And I walk out, and as you walk, as I walk into the bathroom in my apartment, you actually morph into this scene where you walk into the doctor's office. And uh, his name was Dr. Tom. And so when we were shooting the scene, the, you're totally naked. Uh, except for like what they call uh, what they, cocksuck. Cocksuck. Thank you. Yeah, I prefer man hammock, but cocksuck is fine. <laughs> you probably need a man hammock. Actually. <laughs> Thank you for putting me on a pedestal. No worries. You. <laughs> you, can, you can sort me out later. Um, with money. With money. If you, can't, if, you money. Can't, if you can't tell, we like each other. These two right here. You're gonna see a lot of this guy. <laughs> so so anyway, so so the camera crew are behind. Like, so I walk through the door and the camera crew are here and, uh, and I'm just literally just wearing a cock sock or banana hammock and, uh, and Dr. Tom goes, towel? Yeah, sure. So he throws me a towel. So every time I catch a towel and I put it around me, but one time he throws me the towel and I drop it. So the camera's here and I go like this. And all I hear is, oh my god, Jesus, cut! <laughs> True story. I, I just want to say for the record, I wanted to see the show bad before. Now I, I gotta see it now. It's like the next thing on my watch list for sure. I think I, think I have the outtake. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Hello, Co Coco? Yes. How are you? I'm pretty well. I will not ask you to sing. Thank God. That's um, what everyone just said, by the way. Well, I, I couldn't decide what to ask, but actually, I've heard that when you're acting and pulling emotion from certain, um, for a certain scene, there's a couple of schools of thought. One is that you think of some experience that has happened to you already, and you, to get that emotion, or when you're um, playing an emotional part, do you really get into that character so much that that is actually 
what is happening. So that's, which, what, what do you... That's a really interesting question. And it's like, a, you know, uh, it's one of those great mysteries in acting um, whereby, you know, the, what, what, the first thing you were talking about is called substitution. So you, I thankfully never had someone close to me pass away. Well, I have, but like not, not in my immediate family. Um, but I've had to play that. And uh, so you think about things that upset you, um, things that have really touched you as a person. Like you know, it might be a girlfriend breaking up with you, or it might be uh, you know your dog dying. You know, it, 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 and it's it's stuff that really make you feel something. You know, um, and we've all felt stuff. And um, you know, the other thing that you're talking about is like a Daniel Day Lewis type stuff. You know, um, there's a story about Daniel Day Lewis said that he will never do stage again because. Uh, he was doing, I think, Hamlet or something, and um, he was on stage in the UK, and he, his dad passed away, I think, years, years ago, and uh, he's, there's a, there's a bit with the ghost, you know, the Hamlet with the ghost, and uh, he, uh, he saw his dad, apparently, and he freaked out, and I, I know this story because I worked with a costume designer that, that, that was on, on that show, and, and she said he, like, they had to get a stand-in to go in, or his, uh, uh, what's it called, the theater again? Understudy. Uh, Study. Fuck yeah, thank you. It's been what? so long since I've done theater. Understudy. Oh, that's right. Um, he and said it to me. They had to get her un his understudy to do the, the, the second half of the show, and she was saying that they had to like go into his room and pull off his boots, and he was like, and, like as Daniel Day Lewis does, he gets into his like own head, like you know, I don't know if you've ever seen my left foot or whatever. He, like he really, really does it. Um, and it, you can call it method or whatever you call it, but it's just the, it's it's acting is so you know, subjective. It's like, it's how you feel yourself. And you can call it Meisner or Stanislavski and all these great um, acting coaches and, 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 and thinkers of, of, of all time. Um, but it's really personal. It's like, so, so you learn as an actor to, to hone your own skills and to cherry pick from all these different people. And uh, um, whatever works for you, works for you. And it's about, and I think you become a better actor when you find out what that is, um, and that's you know, you know, Ian McKellen never, never was able to cry on stage or on set until he came out as a gay man. Forty nine, I think he was, and he's one of the greatest actors of all time. And he, he just he said it uh, in in a podcast that I was listening to, and he goes like, no, as soon as I was I came out, I was able to cry, and I think that says a lot about us as people and, uh, and us as actors, that um, you've got to be, once you're true to yourself and once you kind of understand what it is about yourself and why you're doing what you're doing, um, it's just a great release. It's a really good question. You guys kind of gave me that, which is weird. The, in, everything, everything he said is 100% truth and I feel the same way. I feel like you, as a human being, hide from yourself until you're allowed to be comfortable with who you are. And it takes, it can take forever. Some actors and people find it at a young age, some don't. I was raised by a single father, and I was raised tough, and I was raised by mechanics, and I was raised to never cry. And so I started acting at 24 years old, and I studied with somebody, and they kind of told me all those things that you just said. And I said, oh, so I can start to figure out how to be who I am, whoever the hell it is. And so for 25 years, I held back every emotion. I held everything inside. I turned every single emotion that I had into anger. Everything. Happiness was anger. Love was anger. Sadness was anger. And then being here, and this is so weird, and I'm not just kissing ass. You guys have heard me say this before. You read about it in that chapter in that book. I realized when I first sat on the stage and I was that closed down person that I didn't have to be this person anymore. And through Rich and Rob and going through all the things that we've gone through together, meeting you, you know, we've had experiences just this weekend that you realize who you are and who you're allowed to be. It's okay. It's okay. Once you have that, every emotion you have comes right out. It comes out of your body all the time. It's a lovely way to live your life. We should all just be able to do it except the fact that we're all weirdo, screwed up people. That is the beauty of humanity. That's what we are. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thank you so much. That's pretty good. And just, you know, on that note, um, we're being kicked off. On that note, we're being kicked off. Well, I'm not going. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving up there.
Oh, are we on leaving? Oh, oh we are getting this, this is our last row, but we don't get off the stage. This is our last row. Hey, bro, guys, guys, you guys are awesome. awesome people. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you.